May you be a blessing itself. May you be a blessing. This is God's will for you, for me, for each and every one of us. Who is the father? Who's the father who does not want his own child to be a blessing? Who is the father who does not desire for his children to inherit from he, the father, the greatness of being? So this is exactly what God wants for you. He wants you to be a blessing. But I'm not getting this, Bishop. What does it mean to be a blessing? It means that you don't need to be chasing after the blessing. You will be a blessing. It means that you will be a blessing. Jesus said, whoever drinks from the water which I give him, this water will make him a fountain to spring up through out eternity. So God wants to make of you a fountain. Do you believe in this? Do you believe? Because I believe, I trust, I believe. He who believes in God obviously needs to believe in this because no one wants the best for his children as the Father himself. Is it not so? So, in order for you to be a blessing, you need to have the spirit of the blessing. You need to have the spirit of God. You need to be a child of God. You need to be conceived by God, which is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It is the seal of the Holy Spirit in us. The Apostle Paul, guided by the Holy Spirit, he speaks about this. And because many people in those days, as today, they carried within them that doubt, that insecurity, whether they were actually baptized or not with the Holy Spirit. How can I know if I am baptized with the Holy Spirit or not? How can I have the assurance that I am a child of God or not? Do you know why, Bishop? Because my life has been so miserable, so terrible, so ordinary that I have no desire to live. Sometimes I keep asking myself, why did I come to the world? Why did I come to this place, to this world? Because I only know suffering and pain. How can I be a child of God and at the same time live this disgraceful life I've lived? This makes no sense. It's true. You have every reason. Every reason. So a person wonders, well, if God wants me to be a blessing, first he needs to set me free from this miserable life I've lived. Very well, my friends. This is exactly what God's proposal for you is. Look at what the Holy Spirit, through the Apostle Paul, says to all the followers of the Lord Jesus. Let us read the scripture. It reads, the Spirit Himself, referring to the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, the Spirit Himself bears witness, confirms, testifies. He testifies with our spirit that we are children of God. So, verify this, friends. If by any means, 
You are not baptized or sealed with the Holy Spirit. You don't have this assurance. You don't have this confirmation, this divine confirmation that you are actually a child of God. And because you're not a child of God, you don't have the right to enjoy what are the rights of the children of God. One thing is for you to be a child. Something else is for you to be a bastard. So he who is a child of God, he who is a child of God, I'm not referring to religion. No, the Bible speaks about the fact of being a child of God or not. He is not saying you who are a Christian or not a Christian or Muslim or non-Muslim. No, no such thing. He is speaking here about the children of God. The subject is about the children of God. God's heirs, children, heirs of God. So when a person is not a child of God, he does not have the assurance that he's a child of God, especially because do you think that a person who has the Holy Spirit, who was sealed with the Holy Spirit, who is a ch truly a child of God, will the Holy Spirit actually allow a single percent of doubt within him? Do you think that the Holy Spirit within me will leave a gap, a space in order for me to have doubt that he is my father? Of course not, of course not. So all those who have the Holy Spirit, those who are baptized and sealed with the Holy Spirit, they have a confirmation in the Holy, in the own Spirit, from the Holy Spirit Himself, a confirmation from the Holy Spirit Himself that He is a child of God. And this is something personal. For example, I do not need to convince anyone, anyone that I have the Holy Spirit, that I'm a child of God. Because, because the Holy Spirit Himself, He confirms, He testifies, He witnesses, He affirms that I am His child. So by being a child of God, I have rights, I have privileges. And due to these rights and these privileges, so I will go in search of what God promises in His Word. Here is the reason why we have the campaign of Israel. People, those who make a vow with God on the altar and they place their lives on the altar at the disposal of the Holy Spirit, they surrender body, soul, and spirit 100%. So the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the altar, comes upon them and makes them children of God. This is the chemistry of the new birth, of the baptism with the Holy Spirit, with the seal of the Holy Spirit. You who watch me this moment, you're a Catholic, a Spiritist, a Christian. It doesn't matter who you are or what you have done, whether good or whether you did not do good. It doesn't matter. What matters is from here onwards. It is what you are doing with your life before the knowledge of which you are having with regards to the Holy Spirit. When a person receives the Holy Spirit, the Holy Scripture reads that the Holy Spirit Himself he confirms in one's own spirit that he is a child of God. And because he is a child of God, therefore he will chase after the promises which God his Father gave him, left for him. So this is the proposal of the campaign of Israel. But now, of course, many people receive the blessings 
They search, chase after blessings, but they leave aside the blesser. Then it's obvious that they end up losing. Because Jesus also said, seek first the kingdom of God. First you need to enter the kingdom of God and live in His righteousness. Then yes, you receive the Holy Spirit who confirms that you are a child of God. And then yes, you take possession of all which the kingdom of God has. All of God's inheritance for His children. How wonderful, isn't it? But Bishop, I'm not a religious person. I'm not a person of really going much to church. It doesn't matter. What matters is your faith in the promises of God. It's your faith exercised, practiced upon the Word of God. And the Word of God teaches with clarity. When a person has the Holy Spirit, he has God inside of him. He is a fountain of blessing. He has the direction of the Holy Spirit in order to know what to do or not to do with his life. He has the, con the conductor of the Holy Spirit who leads them to take possession of that which he has promised in his word. So, my friends, see that the Christian biblical faith, the living faith in the God of the Bible, is intelligent. There is a partnership. When you surrender, when you marry God, which is when on the altar you surrender your life 100% body, soul, and spirit. So the Holy Spirit comes and receives your life as the bride. As a groom receives the bride on the altar, he receives her life or he, he receives your life and fills you with his presence. You, sealed, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit and consequently from then onwards, all of your debilities, your complexes, your weaknesses, they fall to the ground and you start to believe in God because He's with you. You start to believe that He is your Father and then you also start to believe in yourself because it's not enough for you to believe in God but not believe in yourself, is it not so? What good is it for you to believe in God but not in yourself? It's what happens to the religious people. Religious people believe in God, but they don't believe in themselves. But when a person receives the Holy Spirit, he, believes, he begins to believe in God and in himself. Because the assurance, there is assurance, security, confirmation from God himself that he is his child. So he goes ahead, he advances against the problems again. He goes forward, he proceeds to achieve everything which the promises of God or, or the Word of God promises. This is what it means to receive, to have the Holy Spirit. When a person has the Holy Spirit, he is absorbed by the Spirit of faith, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of achievement, of victory. And then he himself on his own, guided by the Holy Spirit, he takes possession of that which God has promised. Which means he is no longer depending on the boss, employee, or the government. He is no longer dependent on anyone except God and himself. So the Holy Spirit himself, he testifies, he bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And that's why we believe in God, but we also believe in ourselves. Praise be to God.